your Lord and Master. In John chapter 13, verse 12 through 15, we read, So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so am I. If I then be your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. In the scripture, Jesus was showing an example of true servanthood. I believe it is your desire as well as mine to live for Jesus and allow him to be the Lord and master over our lives. We desire to live for him in such a way that might allow the Holy Spirit to make us profitable servants. As servants, we should live for Christ as he desires in humbleness. The thought in our heart should be, Lord, I've done all you have asked, but is there something more I could do for you? We as humans have been born in this world as servants to a master. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 tells us, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. Yea, ye cannot serve God and mammon. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 will read and tell us that we ought not to love the world and neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. As believers, we know our master is God, who in the beginning manifested himself as the word. In John chapter 1, 1 through 3, we read that the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. God is a master over everything, all things he created Psalms chapter 95 verse 3 through 7 for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods in his hands are the deep places of the earth the strength of the hills is his also the sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. In John 1.14 then we read, And the word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John here is showing us our master is God who has taken on flesh. His name is Jesus. In case you wondered, he is wonderful and he's the rose of Sharon. The lily of the valley is he. And we are his servants. Now a servant is someone whose rights are set aside to serve another. Servants in historic sense were purchased or born into a master's family. Paul the Apostle and others conveyed this thought that we were purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. As a servant, we voluntarily set aside our personal rights in order to love and to serve and obey God. The example of giving our rights away would be as one that enlisted in the United States Army and signed their rights over to the government for service. You don't have to give your rights to a church. No, that's not what God is asking. You're not giving your rights to any man, to any bishop or any pope. 
You haven't become part of a man-made cult system. No, no, no. You gave your rights over to Jesus Christ. The songwriter wrote this wonderful song. I give myself away. So Lord, that you can use my life. So you can use me. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. When you took Jesus as your Lord and Master, you gave your entire rights over to Him. I want to emphasize, you gave your rights over to Jesus Christ alone, not unto a man. That's very important. You gave your rights to Jesus Christ. In a sermon, William Branham spoke of the church and its condition. He said, you are bought with a price. That was the price of the precious blood of the Son of God. You have no legal rights. Now remember this is in the same context of giving your life over as that example is of the soldier to the U.S. Army. You have no legal rights. The only rights you have is to come to the fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. Yes, sir, that's the only right you have is to surrender your self-will to God. And then God does the leading from then on. Servants of Christ, we die daily to the sin and to the fleshly desires that bombard us every day. We see this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, that we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet, not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. To be a servant is to seek the will of God in all things and honor his will in all things. When you are striving for the master, I want you to know, the Lord Jesus is in full control of your life. You are to be a righteous man before the Lord, for the Lord delights in those lives that are righteous before Him. Surely the righteous person may stumble and fall. The scripture says, but the Lord will protect him. This is in Psalms 37. Servants of Christ do their work humbly and selflessly, desiring only to please and the the master, the love of the master. There are no pretensions and and no self-importance and no compensation sought for in a true servant's life. Someone once said, the smallest package I've ever seen was a man wrapped up wholly in himself. Another man said, Christ sends none away empty, but those who are full of themselves. William Branham, in a message in 1955, the secret believer Jairus said these words. He said, I've taught much to heathens in Africa or India, many different parts of the world, but the worst unbeliever you deal with is not the man who has never heard. It is the man who is self-centered in his own way and won't heed God. Jesus reminds us of the lowly place a servant occupies. And you can read that also in John 13, 14 through 15. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, and ye should do as I have done unto you. I want to encourage you, friend, today, that you acknowledge the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Master. Realize when you receive Christ into your life, all your rights were given freely unto him. Humble yourself to find the mind and the will of the master. Jesus is our master. He showed us how to be a servant in humility. We should desire to give all that is asked of us and more by the grace of God to be profitable servants.